Continuing on with our fun color demonstrations, in this Adobe Illustrator CS6 demo I'm going to talk about working with gradients and transparency. First I'll talk about accessing how, how you would access the gradient panel versus the gradient tool, um, how to select gradient colors, then we'll make some adjustments using the gradient tool. Next we'll move on to the transparency panel and settings for opacity in both the control panel and the transparency panel. So here's a few items that I have on the stage to begin with for demonstration purposes of course. And let's say that we want to add a radial or circular type of gradient um, to the circle on the artboard. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do is select this and I'd also like to bring it to front. Right now this item is behind this item on the artboard and since I'm going to be working on it I'd like it to be in the front. Um, one thing that you can do is you can go under Object Arrange Bring to Front or you can use the keyboard. You can use on a Mac Command Shift Ending Bracket or Control Shift Ending Bracket in a Windows environment. So bring to front. So I have this basic item, it has no exciting colors applied to it, and I'd like to create a radial gradient for this. I'm going to open the gradient floating panel, which I do have a link to here, or I can find it under Window and Gradient. First I have to select the type of gradient I want to use, in this case it's a linear gradient. I've selected this, and I'm sorry, a radial gradient. Ah, what am I saying? There, it's a round circular object, so radial versus linear. You can kind of see the difference there. And so this radial gradient, and at first it starts out pretty metallic looking, somewhat boring. Um, maybe I want to set different colors to this and then later I can change the highlight point. So I've got the fill and the stroke. I have access to both right here on the panel. Right now I'm going to adjust the fill and I'm going to change the colors. It's going from white to black. So I am going to double click and bring up some swatches. Now it's bringing up the default swatches and of course I could access other swatches if I wanted to or I could mix additional swatch colors if I needed to. Um, for quickness and expediency I will just choose something that already exists. So I've got a nice color selected there and if I click on then the darker color so we've got highlight now we have low light to select I can double click and bring up that color as well and I'll choose something interesting. Okay, so now I have my gradient. I can do several things with the sliders. I can create more low light in the object, slide it back, and notice how I get to see my results on the artboard as I make these adjustments. There's the highlight. I can use the slider to change that. I can also change the percentage, how much highlight is showing, how intense that highlight is, the intensity, depending on where the center point is or the location, the percentage of this center point. And what if I decided I wanted the highlight somewhere else on this object? How would I access that? Notice the gradient panel just lets me show or hide these options. Just the sliders are showing the options, but it doesn't allow me to select a highlight point anywhere on this panel. I would need to go to the gradient tool which is located on my toolbar. If I click on the gradient tool, notice how the, the change on the artboard to this object and I can see the sliders. I have access to the sliders here. I can also click and drag the center point and make that light source look like it's in the top right. And of course I, I can still adjust the sliders there as need be if I want a little bit heavier highlight. 
And if I want to see the effects without having the gradient tool showing, I can always just choose my selection tool or something of that nature to click away or get away from the gradient tool. I could even just click somewhere on the artboard. So now I have this interesting little orb here floating around. Now also I have a, a cylinder that I've made out of just simple paths on the artboard and it might be interesting to add a gradient also to this cylinder and try to give it some sort of highlighting. So uh, the first thing I want to do is select this part of the cylinder, bring up the gradient. In this case I will choose a linear and keeping in mind where my light source is, which is over to the right, I'll probably end up swapping these two. You can kind of see how that effect changed what was going on in the cylinder. So I've I'm assuming that I have some sort of light source on the right side. And I can make a change as well to this top part of the cylindrical object and I can choose again, I can choose a gradient. Um, maybe in this case we could try linear and radial and see which looks better. Let's try a radial and we're gonna swap these two. And then I can make changes using my gradient tool. So I can therefore adjust you know, where that highlight's going to be. And I can click and drag and expand so that this shape makes a little bit more sense. Um, I can also do things to this object like remove the stroke. so that it wouldn't have an outline so it seems that maybe you know where these two items connect is a little bit more logical and it seems like I've got a little bit of low light over here yet on this cylinder so I can um, again click and pull and make adjustments to that bit there and see if that helped at all. I don't want it to be too hot on that side. I can move it down or I can rotate that a bit. Oops. Depending on where I click, click and drag, I can change this highlight tool Notice how if I just click, it sets that resets the highlight. And I can click away from the gradient tool. And I can keep making adjustments as needed to make this look like a more realistic cylindrical object. When I'm happy with what I've got going on there, now it's time to play a little bit with some opacity changes using the transparency panel or opacity which you can access in, in two places. What if I wanted to see this object behind this object? I'm going to make that a little bit darker object for this demo and I'm going to click on this sphere and I'm going to bring up my transparency panel, which is located here or can be accessed under Window and Transparency. And you can see I have access to the amount of opacity, which lets me set the percentage. Right now, by default, it's set to 100%, but I can change that to 40%. It makes it very light. You can really see the object behind it. You can just play with different percentages, but it's really interesting to see that you have this type of 
power on the opacity percentages or you can always type in a percentage by clicking on the opacity field and hitting return and you can do the same thing using your menu here along the control panel. So you have access to opacity in your transparency or in the opacity drop down menu from the control panel. I can change blending modes in the transparency panel and it's kind of interesting to see if it's just an overlay well you're going to see more of that object behind it and depending on how you change the elements you know you might get a little bit different effect which could be helpful if say you wanted to make um, water and water sometimes has a little bit of a, um, a color changing effect if you're looking through a glass to something behind it you know sometimes these blending modes which may be familiar to you from working in Adobe Photoshop you know those can um, make some changes as opposed to just seeing through the object actually there's a little bit difference in color in the way that the object is now being sh being seen through the object in front of it. So it's fun at this point to just experiment with these items. We'll talk about masks in a later demonstration, but at this point, you know, I encourage you to work with the gradient tool, changing opacity at objects on the artboard, try to uh, create different elements and give them a little bit of dimensionality by working with the gradient tool. And this concludes your introduction to working with gradients and transparency panel.